In this lesson, we're going to look at trigonometric functions of any angle, and we're going to extend our definition of the six trigonometric functions beyond the first quadrant. For up until now, we've defined the six trigonometric functions for an acute angle, but we want to look at angles that are in the second quadrant, third quadrant, and the fourth. And we start off by drawing an angle in standard position, and we have an ordered pair on that terminal side of theta. Remember the initial side is on the x-axis. We call the terminal side R, and the reason why we call that R is because we think of rotating this angle around in a circle, then R would be the radius of the circle. So you can see that if XY is a point on that terminal side, then Y would be the height of that triangle and X would be the base of the triangle if we dropped a perpendicular line down to create a triangle. We can extend this to the second quadrant by dro dropping a perpendicular, also extend it to the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant by doing the same. So the relationship of the new definition is related to the Pythagorean theorem just as the original six trigonometric function definitions were. So let's look at the official definition. It says let theta be any angle in standard position and let P equal XY be a point on the terminal side of theta. R is equal to the square root of X squared plus Y squared. That comes from the idea of the Pythagorean theorem. It's also derived from using the distance formula from the, the origin to the point on that terminal side. And the six trigonometric functions are as follows. The sine is y over r, the cosine is x over r, and the tangent is y over x. And obviously the three reciprocal functions are as follows. Just the reciprocal of sine be r over y, r over x, and x over y. Now I want to refer back to that first triangle if you ever forget this definition, you can always refer back to the Sokotoa by drawing your angle, drawing that line perpendicular to the x-axis and using Sokotoa. Here's theta. Y is the side opposite, so you'd have opposite over hypotenuse, so Y over R. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be give you the x over r. And tangent is y over x, and that will give you the, the tangent. The reciprocal functions will remain the same. Just take the reciprocal of the original. So let's try the first example. We want to evaluate the six trigonometric functions given an ordered pair. So the ordered pair is negative 3, negative 5. It's on the terminal side of theta. So I know that in order to find the six trigonometric functions of an angle when we're given an ordered pair, we need to know x, which is negative 3. We need to know y, which is negative 5. And we need to know r. And once we know those three things, we can set up our ratios. r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So negative 3 squared is 9. 5 squared is 25, so this equals the square root of 34. So sine is y over r, which is going to be negative 5 over the square root of 34. And just for the sake of time in this video, I'm going to leave these unrationalized, but if in the instructions in your homework, if it asks you to rationalize, you should. Cosine of theta is x over r which is going to be negative 3 over the square root of 34. And the tangent is y over x, so it's going to be negative 5 over negative 3, which is 5 thirds. And then the three reciprocal functions would be negative square root of 34 over 5, negative square root of 34 over 3, and 3 fifths. So just to tie this relationship back to the original definition, 
I'm going to draw the angle negative the angle whose terminal side has the point negative 3, negative 5 on it, and I'm going to drop that perpendicular up to the x-axis. And so even though the length of a triangle, the side of a triangle, can't be negative, it's still helpful to draw it. So let's say this is negative 3 and the distance of y would be negative 5. Just to help you see it better, this is theta right here. Theta is always the angle that your terminal side makes with the x-axis. And so again, if you forgot the relationship, the y over r, x over r, and y over x, if you forget the definition, you can still refer back to SOHCAHTOA even though you're using those negative numbers. So if you think of theta, the sine of theta would be opposite over the hypotenuse, and we said the hypotenuse of the radius would be 34. So there's your negative 5 over the square root of 34. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so there's your negative 3 over your square root of 34, and your tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Again, you don't need to draw this triangle, but if you forget the relationship, and if you forget this new definition of a trigonometric function of any angle, you can always draw the triangle to help you get those values. Now, so what I'd like you to do now is pause the video and do the practice problem and then turn the video back on to check your work. Alright, given the point 1, negative 3 on the terminal side of theta, evaluate the six trigonometric functions of theta. So I know x equals 1, y equals negative 3, and r is going to equal the square root of x squared plus y squared. So 1 squared is 1, plus y squared, which is 9, so I get the square root of 10. So the sine is y over r. So it's going to be negative 3 over the square root of 10. And again, for the sake of time, I'm going to leave these unrationalized for now. Cosine is x over r, so it's 1 over the square root of 10. And the tangent is y over x, so it would be negative 3 over 1 or negative 3. We'll take the reciprocal of each of these, so negative 10 over the square root of 3. The square root of 10 over 1 is just the square root of 10, and the reciprocal of negative 3 is just going to be negative 1 third. Again, I'd like you to notice that four of these functions are negative and two of them are positive. We'll talk more about signs in an upcoming video.